technical point of view, can you please turn the meeting on and begin broadcasting? Um, the, I'm going to call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order on July 15th, 2020. As chairman of the Finance Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are one, providing public access to the meeting by telephone and with additional access possibilities by vid video or electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial area code 929-205-6099. The meeting, the Zoom meeting ID is 861-2767-1943. And the password is zero, excuse me, password is 807417. The public may also view the meeting via channel 16. And I believe, and uh, we have switched from WebEx to Zoom now, uh, and therefore should be able to accept public comment during the meeting when uh, that comes up uh, with the same ground rules as the Board of Aldermen, uh, five minute limit. Uh, and uh, we of course can, will take public comment when it's called for on the agenda. Second, we need to provide public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Public Health Department. Third, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call area code 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. Fourth, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods meant that I've already mentioned, the meeting will be adjoined and adju excuse me, adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required under the right to know law. So would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Alderman Patricia Clee. I am here. I can hear you. I am alone in the room and I am here because of social distancing. Alderman Elizabeth, Elizabeth Lou. Yes, I'm here alone and uh, I can hear you. And the clerk is present here alone and of course can hear you all. And I'm practicing social distancing. Alderwoman Shoshana Kelly. I am here, I'm alone, and I am practicing social distancing. Alderman Michael Laws. I'll take it, I'm here, I'm alone, and I am also practicing social distancing. Alderman Michael O'Brien, senior. Uh, he, um, Alderman O'Brien, contacted me to inform me that he would not be available tonight. Okay. And Mayor Dodges. Uh, I am present and I am alone at home here and I'm participating remotely because of social distancing. Okay, so we have six members and we have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. 
First item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone on the meeting via Zoom, video, or over the phone who would like to make public comment concerning any matters before the committee? Oh, and before we go on to the remainder of the agenda, I wanted to mention that we, uh, I see that we have Alderman Skip Cleaver present. He is not oh, yes. a member of the committee, but is of course a member of the Board of Aldermen. Uh, all right, we will move on to communications. The first communication from, the first communication from Bobby Bagley, Public Health Director. Uh, Alderman Harriet Gathright. Okay, is that the one? Mm. Is that the contract, the one with the human contract? The Humane Society, yes. Okay, isn't that the one that's that we tabled? So we're yes, gonna have to take that off the table. Well, let's. Um, I think let's accept the communication first, and okay. then we'll um, deal with the uh, taking it from the table. Right. It says here, Chairman Dodgers to accept and place to a file. All right. Well, then we won't do it by motion unless there's an objection. I will accept and place on file. Okay. Now we we uh, uh, I will accept and place on file, and then we will return to this item when it comes up under unfinished business. Okay. Uh, now we have a communication from Ke Kelly Parkinson, purchasing manager. Before we proceed. I want to introduce Ms. Parkinson, who will is appearing for the first time before the Finance Committee. She is the new purchasing manager. As you may recall, Dan Kuken retired. And we're very happy to welcome Ms. Parkinson to appear before us and to work for the city. Uh, and we appreciate uh, her, her interest in the purchasing manager position. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Alder, so we have a communication from Ms. Parkinson, uh, Alderwoman, Alderman Harriet Gathright. A motion to accept placed on file and approve the purchase of sodium hydro hydrochloride in the amount of 125,000 to Borden and Remington by roll call. Now, do we have uh, Mr. Boucher, is he, is he here to address this item? Yes, I am, Mr. Mayor. Uh, um, could, could you uh, please do so? Yeah, David Boucher, wastewater superintendent. Uh, this is for sodium hypochlorite. It's a disinfectant we use in our treatment process. After the, we process the wastewater before it gets discharged to the river, uh, sodium hypochlorite is added to disinfect the water. Uh, it's added uh, on a daily basis, 24-7. This is an annual cost for the sodium hypochlorite. Uh, we purchase, uh, we get involved in a bid process through the Northeast Merrimack Valley Chemical Consortium to get the lowest price. And uh, the price through Morden and Remington uh, for this fiscal year, it's up 1.5%, but it, it, it's still a reasonable cost uh, at 0 .086 uh, dollars per wet time. So we're able to keep our budget the same as last year. I'll take any questions. Any comments or questions? Mr. Mayor, I have a quick question. Alderwoman Clay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bouchard, this... This is just for the, the wastewater. This is not for um, any of that combined um, sewer. Is that correct? Because we wouldn't be able to get to that. So it's yes, just the... that is correct. This chemical is only used at the wastewater plant and it's just added to the water just before it goes, gets discharged to the river. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Clay. Yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Clerk, yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Laws. 
Yes. And Mayor Donches. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Our next communication is also from Ms. Ms. Kelly Parkinson, purchasing purchasing manager. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. I motion to accept, place on file, and authorize the property card scanning proposal in the amount of $59,638 to Inception Technologies by roll call. And I believe, thank you very much. And I believe Ms. Kleiner is here to talk about the details of this contract. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor Donches, member of the committee. Um, so this, uh, the idea for scanning our property record cards was actually first introduced, um, I believe um, to me, what at a coffee with the mayor um, earlier this year um, by a resident. Um, at that time, the assessing department uh, looked into the matter. We had some conversations with IT and Director Conningone, um, and we felt that although it was a worthy project, we were um, in the middle of the testing for the AP5 upgrade, and we were just beginning the full measure and list reevaluation, and we did not feel it was a project that we could take on at that time. Um, set it aside and then COVID happens. Um, in hindsight, um, now to look back, would the project have been beneficial um, with COVID and with our staff working remotely? Absolutely, uh, no doubt about it. Um, so we brought it back again. Now that we finished the AP5 upgrade, um, Director Conning known uh, brought in a couple of organizations. Um, we had some discussions. One of the main reasons we're choosing Inception uh, is because they deal with DocuWare. And upon reviewing the DocuWare software, we felt it was a product that meets our needs, not only in assessing, but also in other city departments. So when you engage um, and you bring in a new software, you also want to make sure that although it fits for assessing, is it going to fit for the rest of the organization? Because you don't want a number of different document management systems in different um, city organizations. So all of our directors sat and reviewed the DocuWare software. Um, and had a presentation before assessing decided to move forward with this software. Um, we, this is a very large project. So if you look to the section of the contract where it says the city's responsibility, this is a lot of staff time. Um, we will actually be pulling the files, we will be going through, we'll be indexing them. Um, this is going to take a significant amount of time, but it has many, many, many uh, rewards to it. Not only will our assessors um, be able to work with their new tablets on IP, uh, AP5 from the field, they'll now be able to pull up those property record files and they'll be able to deal with those. Um, and that's something that they haven't had in the past. They've had to come back to the office, look through the property record file, call back the uh, resident, ask more questions, look at the file again. You know, it's not as efficient as it could be. Um, the other part of this, and certainly one that we still recognize, is the being able to offer these files publicly. But you really have to put this in, in phases. This is a very large project. So while we need to first work on getting these files indexed, figure out the process, there's going to be um, going through each file and saying what's a public file and what's non-public. 
So if you have financial information or if you have um, on the commercial side, you have income statements and things of that, those will have to be marked by us as a non-public document. They'll still be scanned, but when you do get into the phase where you look at making these public documents, those documents would be handled differently. Um, so it's not that, um, I know that I got reached out today um, because last night at my presentation, I didn't mention the public portion of this project. That's not to say that there isn't. Um, I noted in my memo about how more efficient we could be because we wouldn't have to spend time copying and emailing files. So certainly we do realize the significance of making records easily um, accessible for the public, um, but there's also the efficiencies within the department. So it's, it's two tiered. Um, the other part of this contract that's worth noting is at the end, you will see a line item for uh, professional services. And that line item is so that we can sit with the company and figure out how best to move forward with other departments and look into how we handle contracts within the city because we'd like to get our city contracts on this process because it contains a very useful workflow for sending those contracts through the city department ultimately to uh, the Board of Aldermen or Finance Committee, um, obtaining signatures and having those contracts executed. So we've built that additional money into the contract to see how this project progresses after the uh, assessing portion of it. Thank you, Ms. Kleiner. Now, do, are there any comments or questions? But before we go to that, I wanted to make sure that the record reflects that Alderman Dowd has joined the meeting. Okay. Any other Alderman that we have not recognized to have joined the meeting? I don't see anyone, but if anyone has, please speak up. Okay, then let's go to Alderwoman Clee, who I believe has a question. Uh, thank you so much. I, I remembered reading it, and now I've been sitting here looking through the document. Um, uh, Director Kleiner, could you Remind me how many um, items that we uh, feel that will be um, scanned in all of this. And you mentioned about um, the a private possible, um, or that there will be. The plan is in the future to have a a, a public and um, probably like I, I'll call it a city side of it, where there would be some private information. So, in aspect of that, there's two questions here. One is the um, how many of the items or do you feel that are going to be scanned? And the second is that private information, um, will that be access, accessible to anybody in the assessing department or will that be much like how they do in hospitals? Like um, not everybody can see a particular patient's record. So would you have levels of security for that, those pieces of more private information like income and so on? So um, quite often the, items like income statements and things of that sort, um, those will only be seen by the assessing department. Um, our, that's who needs to see them. That's, um, you know, they have certifications to deal with these types of records, um, but certainly we wanna open it up so that um, the building department could access the assessing records that may be a property record card or, a map or an outlet, you know, something that may benefit a building inspector who's going out to do a, a building inspection. So there will be assessing only documents, and then there will be documents that um, could be public, meaning to other departments um, or outside the city. Um, this quote, we did go through the vault, that's where our records are kept. Um, and they estimated that we have around 100,000 documents that need to be scanned. And that's what this quote is based off of. Um, you will see that there is a line in the quote that should that estimate be wrong, the price could change. 
Okay, um, so thank you. And um, so just to, to back, so there will be different levels of security, different levels of um, accessible information, depending upon what your role is, whether public city assessing and, and so on and so forth. Um, thank you so much. I think that'll make the public feel a little bit more safe about some of their information. I appreciate that. Any other questions or comments? Alderwoman Lou. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I know that the property records, the property records are available online, not the property records, the cards are available online already. When you say property record files, what do you mean? Do you also include the files in the building permit office that has all any building permit, et cetera? That, that's a, a great question. So I, I think a lot of people get confused um, or don't quite understand what the difference is between your property record card and your property record file. Um, so your property record file could, could contain everything that all the history of that property from the time you pulled the permit to erect the property. Um, so you could have planning and zoning maps in there. Um, you would certainly have building permits that have been pulled and executed and assessed by our assessors. Those would be in there. You'll have property record cards from different points in time where the assessment on that property has changed. You could also have abatement information in your property record file. Um, you could have documents that have been received or requested on the property um, by either a financial institution or um, a member of the, a resident has reached out and made inquiries on the property. Um, it really is the history of the property. Mm -hmm. um, from beginning till now, where the property record card is just that snapshot, right? That's showing you what's with the property now, other than the portion of the card that will have the history of the assessment. Um, and even that is generally maybe eight, seven to eight years. Um, it's not the entire list of the assessment on the property record card. So we try to think of the card as a snapshot in time and the file as the history. I see. And just a follow up, please. Yes, go ahead. Um, and will each file be limited to, uh, because I think last night you talked about closing the closed files. After the, the property changes hands, does it lose the history or, or not? Uh, Great question. Um, so we were talking about closed files last year, um, and that's on, more on the AP5 on the camera system. So the property file stays the same. The property is the, the map and lot and the parcel. That's the property um, where you could have um, a property that closes um, and either that property's been sold and that goes on to a different owner, but it's still the same property file. Okay. It's even the same property record on the AP5 system, you'll just see on the card that it's been sold in a different owner. Um, so closed accounts um, really aren't closed property record files. Those don't get closed. Per se. All right. Thank you. And would you say the need for this um, kind of electronic um, uh, rec recording has really been needed for, as it, is it something that uh, recent multiple requests have generated the need, or is it just something that we needed to move into to be uh, a more efficient office and operation? Do you want me to restate that? I don't, I feel as though I was a little. <laughs> so if I may, I think I know what, what you're trying to say. And certainly, you know, there have been a lot of requests 
for property record files. Um, when you look at the number of requests that have come in, and I do, it's not that many residents are requesting the whole history of their property. Although if you're buying a property, I would encourage you to do that, right? So research your property um, and you can certainly come in and look at it. Um, not something that I knew until I became involved in assessing. Um, but there's also the business aspect of this. So, and I don't wanna lose sight of that. So there's a number of reasons why this is just good business. You have uh, documents in there that are literally falling apart in your hand because of the age of the document. This is preservation of those documents. Um, so you don't get that when you have a scanning technique. The other thing is the access to documents. So when you walk in our vault, and we're, you know, certainly we'd be glad to have you down and take a look, that it's a lot of pulling files and searching through files. When you're dealing with a document management system, it has incredible search techniques. And you can have instant access to these files and not only to the file, but to the document within the file in a matter of seconds. So there's big efficiency in a system like this. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have qu any questions or comments? I don't see anyone. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Clerk says yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. And Mayor Donches. Yes. Motion passes. Next communication is from Kelly Parkinson, Purchasing Manager. Mr. Mayor, I motion to accept, placed on file, and authorize the contract with Rex A. Norman, CAE, in an amount not to exceed $124,800 for assessing consulting services by roll call. Ms. Kleiner. Uh, good evening. So before you is a contract um, with Mr. Rex Norman. Um, Mr. Norman will be, would be providing the city with um, assessing supervisor um, and, and technical um, advice. Um, so a little background on Mr. Norman. Um, Mr. Norman actually worked uh, for the city a number of years ago in the late 90s. He also sat on our board of assessors. Um, he has, he is currently the community development director for the town of Wyndham, but prior to that, he was their town assessor for a number of years. Um, Mr. Norman is familiar with the city. Um, he's familiar um, with some of members of our staff, but he's certainly more importantly familiar with our processes. Um, the other important part um, to note about Mr. Norman is that he has served um, on a number of committees, uh, both state and international. Um, he is a certified general real estate appraiser, um, and he has owned and operated uh, an LLC uh, serving as a consultant to communities. Um, and he has done so while he's been community development director for Wyndham. Um, he has most recently, um, one of the ones that I reviewed was he did work for the town of Rye. Um, so he is familiar with contracting um, with different municipalities when they are in need of that technical experience. Um, he is not um, 
being hired as our chief assessor, the city will continue our search for a chief assessor. Uh, you'll notice that the contract's open-ended for that purpose, um, but we are very thankful to Mr. Norman for agreeing to do this for us. Um, and we feel that it will be, be very beneficial um, for our staff at this time. And could you explain why it is to the committee as to why it is necessary to have a licensed excessive assessor supervisor uh, available either as a full-time employee or as a consultant? Certainly, Mayor. Um, so according to ASB regulations, um, you must have work of an or general assessor reviewed by assessing supervisor. And that includes um, all valuations, um, appeals, um, a number of different things that have to be signed off and approved by someone who holds an assessing supervisor certification. And that, in this case, for Nashua would be Mr. Norman. That it would. All of our staff um, would have their work, their valuations um, reviewed by and signed off by Mr. Norman before being brought forth to the Board of Assessors. And one question that we received was, uh, given that he, he, Mr. Norman, works for the town of Wyndham, does he have time and will he be able to provide the necessary services to the city of Nashua uh, given his affiliation with Wyndham? It's certainly a fair question, one that Mr. Norman and I have discussed at length. Um, to be fair, he has done this for other communities. He's continued to work um, and have his own business um, certainly choosing the assignment um, himself. This is, he's not going to be a chief assessor. And with a chief assessor comes to a different role. As a chief assessor, you're working on supervising the day-to-day -day activity within the office. You're overseeing the administrative staff. There's a lot of other duties. So this scope is very limited. He is going to be providing that technical overview of the assessing work. Um, he will have access to our systems. He will have access to our camera system. Um, and we feel that he will, being, limit, being a limited scope, he will have the necessary time to perform the duty and to perform it well. Any questions or comments from uh, Alderwoman Clee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Director uh, Connor. I really appreciate this. And before the meeting, I had asked you about it being um, no end date, and I, I appreciate you addressing that. Um, and the, as you said, it would be that it would be terminated um, upon no longer needing it, um, if or when we were finally able to find a chief assessor um, which, to be honest with you, I'm not so sure that that would be possible with this certain pressure that's going on um, these days within the community of, of nastiness, but putting that aside, um, I just wanted to uh, say thank you for doing this. So we also limited it to 124,800. Um, if at that time we're still not able to find a chief assessor, um, you would come back in if he were willing to renew this kind of contract is that how it would go and how long do we think that this um, not to exceed monies will last? Uh, great question. So that is based upon a year. Um, and I under I certainly understand the question of the money um, to be clear. So this is not abnormal. You are hiring a consultant and you're hiring a consultant with very significant experience and that's what we want right now you are not paying this individual benefits and, and and pensions and all the things that you would be an employee um so you have to take that into consideration 
Um, it'll last a year if we still haven't found a chief assessor um, within that time period, then we would need to come back to the board um, and extend the contract. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Um, that's all I have at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Baer. Alderwoman Lou. Thank you, uh, Mayor Donches. Uh, I not clear. Um, I I didn't hear the details of the. Um, is it? Is this? So is it a one year contract? And in other words, uh, is that um, stated uh, a fee paid regardless of how long this person stays with us? No, so um, the moment that the, if the city was to term the contract, the payments end. Um, it was the, re rated. the reason that we say not to exceed 124 is we figured on a year, if he was to last a year, that's how much the weekly payments would turn out to be. I'm sorry, I, I didn't um, completely read the, uh, so the contract, but how is the, how is the fee determined? Is it an hourly rate? Is it a weekly rate? It's a weekly rate. Okay. And when did we, when did we uh, develop the need for this? I'm I'm asking how we uh, you know how long we've been doing, we've been working without this important um, required staff member. So I'm going to give you um, two different answers, and um, because I want to be very clear with the committee, um, I've had the pleasure of working with some truly amazing individuals across the state that have given um, technical advice um, to me and to our staff while we have been undergoing important changes within the department. Um, I spoke to you last night about David Cornell, um, certainly an expert of all experts, um, but I've had other chiefs um, across the state that have reached out and been very supportive of our department. And I'm truly very grateful for that. Um, I think that we have needed this. Um, certainly when I came to you last fall and I said that it was time to hire another chief, that's when we really needed some more technical um, experience. And, and I realized that so that was the start of it. Um, we did have um, a supervisor, um, someone that held the certification um, within the department until most recently, and now we don't. Now we do not, and um, so now it is an issue for the department in the work that we do moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, I have a question. Alderman Laws. Uh, Ms. Kleiner, did, did we go out to bid for this or did we just take this guy because we knew who he was? Great question. Um, we did not go out to bid for this. We actually um, put out a request um, on an assessing lift serve, which goes out to all the professional assessors. Um, we reached out to the DRA for recommendations. We reached out to the NHAAO for recommendations. Um, and Mr. Norman stepped forth. Um, I, did dis I did reach out to other firms within the area um, and spoke with three other assessing firms. Um, and at the moment, no one else was uh, was interested in the, in the contract. Follow up, Mayor? Yes, of course. Um, I, I just lost my thought. Uh, so, we're not told, I, I'm just a little, 
apprehensive about this because that's a lot of money for what effectually may end up being a part-time job. And it's more than we'd be paying a chief assessor, am I correct? Not counting, you know, benefits, pension, things like that. Is that true? Well, so the chief assessors advertised at um, about 117 plus benefit um, and pension. And um, so Can roughly, roughly it would be less than that, less than the chief assessor when you take into consideration benefit. Um, I mean, I, I have full confidence in you, Ms. Kleiner, and I, I trust you to the end of days. I've worked with you before in many different capacities. Uh, and if you need this, I believe you need this. I just, it, it seems like a lot of money for a temporary solution to a permanent problem. And uh, I just needed to voice my concern about that, but I will support this. I mean, I think um, in answer to Alderman Law's concern, I mean, this is a necessary function in the sense that and a, a licensed assessing supervisor is required to certify the work of the other assessors. Otherwise, the other assessors by law can't really do anything. So without this position, uh, the work of the assessing supervisor, the work of the assessing department, and Ms. Kleiner can correct me if I'm in being misstating any of this, but the work of the assessing department would essentially stop. The, any, any valuations uh, or other work, you know, valuations, abatement requests, anything that the assessors do, that those results, the, those conclusions need to be reviewed by an assessing supervisor. Now, that of course begs the question, well, what we do before we have Mr. Norman? Uh, well, as you, I think, know, because it's been publicized in the paper, uh, and we've reported to you at various times, you know, multiple complaints have been filed by a resident or two against all of the assessors, multiple complaints, criminal complaints, ethics complaints. Uh, to be straightforward, that's why we can't find an assessing super, uh, you know, an assessor, chief assessor, it makes or a, a very big factor. This is very well known within, this, within the assessing community of New Hampshire. It's a small, small community. People know each other. They believe that these attacks are totally unjustified and no one wants to step into this type of position. So puts Nashua in a, in a, you know, in a very vulnerable place because no one wants to work here. So, or you know, it's difficult to attract someone to work here. So when, um, although most of these complaints, criminal and otherwise, have turned out to be unfounded, uh, there was a situation where, because we have two brothers who have worked for the city for a long, long time, like 20 years or so, uh, in the assessing department, there was a situation where one brother went out to review, to, to, to do an assessment review at the request of the, of the property owner. And that, and, it, and reached a certain conclusion. I'm not sure what exactly that conclusion was, uh, but uh, the property owner was unsatisfied with that. So wanted someone else, but didn't want a re review by the same assessor. So the chief assessor at the time uh, sent another, uh, the only other assessor that was available, which happened to be the brother of the first assessor. He went out and reviewed the work, and I'm not sure what conclusion he reached either, but it still did not satisfy the property owner. So uh, as a result of this, a lot of complaints were filed against all these assessors. And uh, with, a, with an ethics board up in Concord, and you've seen the documentation, uh, there was a single finding, which was uh, that the, there, was a, there was a finding that, well, Having one brother go in uh, when another brother had already reviewed the work is an appearance of conflict. Now, now, something like this had never been decided before. This is kind of a new, a new uh, decision. Uh, there's no specific rule that says that uh, nothing like you know one 
brother can't do an assessment on the same house as, some, as his other brother. But in any event, there was a finding that, that uh, this was a, um, a, a uh, technical violation, an appearance of conflict. So a minor sanction was issued, which was that this uh, assessor needed to take a course for a year and that his supervise, that he could not serve as a supervisor for one year. He can still be, as, be an assessor. I mean, they, they were seeking the complete, uh, you know, a re revocation of all his licenses and everything like that. Well, none of that happened. But what did happen is that his ability uh, to supervise was uh, suspended for one year. Uh, and they encouraged him to take a course and then become a supervisor. And then he'd be a supervisor again. So that meant that the city didn't have an assessing supervisor, hence the search to find an assessing supervisor. Now, because of the be, right or wrong, the people in the assessing community who are out there assume that they will come under attack, that they will have criminal complaints, they'll have ethics complaints filed against them, just like all of the other assessors who work for Nashua. And so we had to pay, so it was very hard to find someone who would take on this responsibility. Uh, Mr. Norman was willing to do it. Did he charge top dollar? Uh, probably, but this is a necessary function. Have all of these complaints filed against the assessors uh, cost that hardworking taxpayers of Nashua a lot of money? Yes, they have. But the reality is uh, we have to, unfortunately, use taxpayers' money to pay someone to serve in this function because uh, it is very difficult, as I explained, and I think this has become very evident over time, it is very difficult to uh, attract someone to take on a role where they, right or wrong, assume that they are going to be treated to the same type of, uh, they're going to be, uh, receive the same kind of treatment as all of the other assessors in Nashua have, have, have received. And they may end up having to defend all kinds of complaints. So, um, I mean, to be straightforward, that is the situation the city is in. Uh, I have to say, after viewing the presentation by the by Ms. Kleiner and Mr. Misevich last night, I don't know if Mr. Laws was there or not, but yes. um, the depth of the changes and of the improvements that have been made is really is remarkable. Uh, the all of the improvements across the board in the assessing department showing how professional, professionally all of these issues have been handled and the depth of the understanding and of the recommendations is uh, really to be commended. But still, uh, that's, that effort has been recognized across New Hampshire. The other assessors realize all this, but they don't want to be in the position that our, other assess that our assessors are and therefore, uh, it is difficult to find someone. This is a necessary function. If you want the assessing to continue, uh, you, this contract is a necessity. And uh, this is the price that this qualified gentleman, qualified gentleman, highly qualified, but this is what he required. And this is the only person that was willing to take on this role. Mayor, I may. Yes. Uh, I'm glad that my questions related to that very detailed explanation of the situation that we're in. Uh, I'm glad that it's a matter of public record right now. And I would just like you guys to know that if there is one skill set that I have that I think is exceptional, it's the ability to listen to people. Uh, so I will make my services available to you whenever you need them in whatever capacity. You just tell me where to get certified. And I'll come in there and, you know, people can bag on me all day long. I'm used to it. So you want to become an assessor? Sure. Hey. <laughs> well, maybe you should get trained. You know, we could, we could, uh, we could begin. There's some courses you could begin with. All right. I'll get on that. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, Mayor. Any other questions or comments? Alderwoman Kelly. Uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you for that detailed 
um, explanation. I think there was some good discussion there. Um, so my question is just, what is, how does this going to dovetail with our continuing to look for an assessor? And are there some um, road marks where we might say in three months, we'll see where we're at. Is, has anyone come forward? Are we looking at that so that potentially we could get someone into that role instead of uh, paying this gentleman you know, a salary for a year um, and still not continuing that? I, I assume you have a plan, but I would love to hear it um, and put sure. it on the record. Well, the plan is to continue to advertise and hire someone who's qualified as uh, quickly as possible. I mean, we don't want to hire someone who's not qualified. Right. We, or we don't think would do a good job. I mean, we've run into issues with that before uh, and we wanna make sure that whoever is hired will do a good job. And, you know, they're going to be under a lot of pressure. Um, so it has to be someone we know can handle the situation. Uh, and again, we're dealing with the understanding of the situation here that other New Hampshire assessors uh, are very well aware of. So when we advertise, we get no applicants from New Hampshire that have any qualification. So it's all out of state applicants. And uh, I think it's fair to say that we came close with someone, but they developed a family situation that uh, were made a move out of their current, you know, from elsewhere in New England impossible. So the reality is we'll continue to look and as soon as we find someone that, but, but there was another person that uh, the Board of Assessors and Ms. Kleiner, you know, was, didn't think would, was appropriate and wouldn't do as good a job as we need. So uh, one person seemed like they would be very good but their family situation developed, unfortunately. The other person they didn't think could, you know, handle this this job in the way that we expect. So they're going to continue to advertise and continue to interview any qualified applicants that uh, come forth. And as soon as we find one that is a good fit, so to speak, we will, and we'll, I think, live up to everything that's been done there in the assessing department. Uh, then we will hire someone uh, as soon as we possibly can. So, Mayor Donchev? Uh, I think Alderwoman Kelly had a follow up. I, I would, I'll uh, yield to Ms. Kleiner. Ms. Kleiner. So, um, one of the things that we have done, um, and, and certainly everything Mayor Donchev said is, is, is a, a, absolutely true. Um, one of the things that we have done most recently after coming very close to um, a candidate is we've started reaching out to other assessing agencies in other states. Um, Vision, our revaluation company, which is a national company, has actually been speaking. We're going out and, and we're speaking to people um, and speaking to not only the New Hampshire Assessing um, Association, but the International Association to kind of widen our scope. Um, I think that th there is a very limited number of assessors that hold this, this high of a certification in New Hampshire. Um, so really reaching out and widening that search is going to be important if we are ever to fill this question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, and thanks for that. I, mean, I have no concern that we're not doing a thorough job looking for it. And I know that in even when we filled it before, there were only two other applicants. Um, I just wanna make sure, and maybe it's as simple as our assessing up updates that we've been having. Um, in three months, we just at least talk about it, see how it's going with this gentleman, see where we are with the candidate so that we can feel good about saying, okay, we, we need this now, but we're continuing to make sure that we're, we're looking for that and, and trying to find a more permanent solution. That's all. No problem. I mean, I think the, the quarterly update is would you know will be a good thing and that was sort of the plan but then COVID-19 intervened and things sure. got messed up but as you saw we were able that the 
uh, department, the division was able to come back last night and um, will is certainly able to do so on at least a quarterly basis. Perfect. Thank you. Alderwoman Lou. Thank you, Mayor Donchus. Um, I would just like to um, to ask that we try to resist placing the blame on our current situation on any of the residents who have uh, worked hard, um, maybe shown frustration and um, and uh, you know anger at times. I know, but I'm a strong supporter of someone that that um, is seeking. Uh, is seeking to improve their government. And I have listened and spoken with the residents who, who have been a, a thorn in your sides. But, um, you know, I, I, you know, I find it hard to imagine that we can't, you know, that th these people are the reason that we can't, that we haven't got a chief assessor. Um, there were problems and the problems have been slowly but surely corrected. But I know that even this situation where we need someone because we're operating a department without uh, the proper uh, credentials was brought to our attention, my attention first by these people who, who are keeping their eyes on the assessing department. So, uh, I just want to reject that blame, um, and I, I just wanted to speak up for them. Um, I, I don't really like us taking personal, um, being personal about uh, efforts to improve our city government, and I don't like to describe it as a mean meanness or a mean atmosphere. Um, I just also wanted to just ask that my understanding is that when when the um, and I um, Miss Parkinson, it's I'm really pleased to meet you and I'm happy to uh, welcome you. Um, and this is not something that's new, but my understanding was that when a recommendation comes to us from the purchasing manager, that we that ordinance has it that we have that we're provided with the number of firms solicited the summary of their 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 uh quotes and what we were asking specifically from them um and the recommendation and rationale and in this case it's not provided i know that incidentally um we've learned that there have been several other people that uh have been approached about this but my understanding based on just reading what my role is as a finance committee member is that that's what we are meant to be presented and um, I look forward to just having the comfort of that um, process and procedure. Thank you. Well, older woman Lou, I'm going to have to differ with you. Because we're not blaming anyone, but we were asked a direct question. Why do we have to pay this guy $124,000? And why is he necessary? So I believe we're not blaming anyone. And I never used the word mean. I, I just, I did, I gave you the facts. All of the assessors, there have been multiple complaints which have sought the revocation of the licenses of all the people working in the national, all the professionals but one working in the, Nash, in, the, in the assessing office, anybody that has anything to do with residential. Plus there've been criminal complaints, multiple ones filed against them. Um, this is well known in the state of New Hampshire to the other assessors. Well, very well known. Those are facts. That's not blame, those are facts. So rather than mislead you, mislead Alderman, laws who asked us about this directly, we gave you the facts. And if you have a basis to contest those facts, if you, if you know assessors in New Hampshire who will assume this position, or if you know assessors who say that this isn't true, well, bring those facts forward. But we're not blaming, but we don't wanna, we wanna be straightforward and honest 
with the members of this committee, the members of the Board of Aldermen and the citizens of Nashua. And if those facts are uncomfortable, well, it's too bad. Uh, you know, that's the situation. Anyone else have any comments? Questions? If not, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Clerk says yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. And Mayor Dodges. Yes. Next item is a communication from Kelly Parkinson, purchasing manager. All, uh, Madam Clerk, Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. Um, Mr. Mayor, I motion to take from the table the contract renewal with the Humane Society of Greater Nashua for FY21 by roll call. Um, I see something before that, Linda, on the agenda. Did I miss the city master I plan? Did. I'm sorry, I did. All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry uh, about we're, we're now on the purchase of the master plan. Yep. Um, I motion to accept place on file and award a contract for professional services for the citywide 2020 master plan in the amount of 200,249 to util design by roll call. Sorry about that. Uh, we have Ms. Mar Ms. Marchant here to address this contract. Could you please proceed? Yes, good evening. Thank you all so much. Um, I am here before you to talk about finally a contract with a master plan consultant. Um, this process was started quite a while ago. We put an RFQ out earlier this year, um, had eight great responses um, from firms from all over the country and locally. Um, we as a team, including um, the mayor, chief of staff, economic development director, our long range planner, and myself um, and Scott LeClaire, the planning board chair, um, decided to interview three firms. And from there, we have um, selected Utile Design as the best possible firm to support the city through its master plan process. Um, the idea is this will take approximately 12 to 15 months. And the value in this is um, really hearing from our community, engaging on some of those really critical issues we've been talking about over and over again, to get a clear vision of what the community wants as a future, and then to move on from this master plan into implementing changes to the land use code to make sure that we're actually can follow through on this vision. So we do want this to be kind of a compressed process. We are pushing for this 12 to 15 month context because the real key here is the implementation on the other side and updating our land use code to reflect the values that we understand are so important to the community through this process. Um, I will say that um, Utile has a, an incredible amount of experience. They're a design firm out of Boston with um, many of the skills that we were looking for, economic development, um, urban design, very specifically um, transportation planning, arts and culture um, planning backgrounds. And um, we also um, were not, they have a huge amount of engagement and um, different ways of approaching engagement. If you um, think back when we talked about this last fall, we certainly COVID has absolutely changed how we initially went into planning some of the engagement for this and what this process might look like. Um, I think Utile Design will be an excellent team to have behind us. They are um, young, they are adaptable, they are nimble, and I think we will do our best to come up with many different ways to really engage people in this new COVID environment the best way we can. So um, the, um, this contract does include um, several large, um, open house type meetings, it includes several larger meetings, it includes neighborhood level meetings, and it also includes that interaction through hopefully piggybacking off of things that are already in place, like the farmer's market, where we're practicing social distancing, um, or other kinds of events that may or may not be happening this fall and next spring um, that we can really jump on. So that's my quick summary. I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Any questions, comments? Alderwoman Lee. I thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, Director Marchant, um, I, I just have a, a quick question about um, this as far as the um, the master plan and zone is concerned. When I ran for office the, the first time here as alderman, um, I ran across a number of um, less than happy uh, constituents or soon to be constituents um, discussing the uh, bridge over the river from Nashua to Hudson, um, that there had been something in the master plan about that. Um, it, it was abandoned, it never went anywhere. Uh, but one of the things that people kept telling me over and over again was get that out of the master plan because they have this fear and anxiety that this could bubble up. Uh, I'm not asking for that to happen. I'm not even suggesting that to happen. But my question is, if something like that, that has basically been deemed, this is not going to happen, something like that or another item, uh, would we pull that out of the, uh, the master plan? And is this going to recreate a master plan or is it just going to tweak the one we already have? Great question. Uh, this is a from scratch new document. So um, certainly the master plans that have gone in the past, and I would say the ones that have been completed more recently would be more informative today than the ones from say 20 years ago, but this will be a brand new document. Um, there is a giant list of things that um, we do expect the consultants to be very familiar with and to use as kind of background information. Everything from say the East Hollis Street plan, the Main Street plan, the Riverfront plan, um, the bike ped plan we're working on right now. All of these documents we've been working on in the past to give some kind of shape and context. But the point of this is to engage with our community, to ask those harder questions and to really understand what, what Nashville sees itself as today and where do we wanna be in five years from now and 10 years from now so that we can make sure our ordinances reflect those values. Okay, just one follow-up, just for clarification. Um, this has nothing to do with any kind of the parking studies or anything else like these are two very separate, unique items, correct? That is correct. This is a higher level view. That parking study is gonna be really detailed. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank yep. you. Any other questions or comments? Alderwoman Lou. Thank you. Uh, Director Marchand, is the comparison of the quotes, um, that page that has the, the words draft fee proposal at the top left of it? Um, so th this, is an R this was an RFQ. It was not an RFP. There were not quotes that came back with all eight of them. Um, we, we interviewed them based on qualifications. Um, the qualifications, the evaluation of that uh, stated in the memo. And then based on that, those qualifications, we selected a firm and entered into negotiations with them. We did ask as part of the response to the RFQ to, for them to give us their general hourly rates. Um, they, I do have that information from each of the RFQs. I could supply that to you, but it was not, um, that is not the, we don't have um, quotes from, e from all of the respondents. I see. But um, what is and what is the um, the fee? Uh, the fee is two hundred thousand four hundred and I'm trying to get there eighty three dollars. Oh, I see it now. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Oh. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Harry Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Laws? Yes. And Mayor Donches? Yes. Motion passes. We're now on to unfinished business. We have the communication for, from Dan Kukin, uh, which was tabled at the last meeting concerning the contract with the Humane Society of Greater Nashua. I think the appropriate motion to hear if you are satisfied with the explanations that have been provided, although I think Ms. Bagley was here, right, to talk about this. Sorry for the delay, but are you here? Yes. Yes. Thank uh, you for here. You were in communication with the Humane Society, and I, so do you, uh, can you offer a, the yeah. perspective they gave you? Yes, sir. So, and um, 
response to some of the questions that the committee had, the um, executive director of the Humane Society provided answers that um, allowed us to learn that they did not incur any additional costs for the work that they were doing um, in their contract and that the contract amount that is being proposed for this next, next fiscal year is appropriate for them. One of the other things that was brought to the attention of uh, myself, our health officer and the Humane Society was the missing language around uh, chickens. And so the executive director did add um, in an amended contract language that says chickens found running at large, they will provide um, empowerment and quarantine services for, um, sorry, my page is blocked by your pictures, uh, for uh, those animals that are, that are impounded by the animal control officer. Um, they also added an, in accordance with RSA 4418-A and um, the National Revised Ordinance of 93-6 for empowerment of dogs, cats, ferrets found at large. They've added chickens as well, that they will impound them immediately if no permanent identification was found. They also provided the number, we were able to review from their uh, the previous fiscal year how many uh, chickens were actually impounded. And I believe that I saw four. And I believe that all four of those, uh, a home was found for all four of them. And so those were the uh, questions that were pro proposed by the committee. I'm not sure if there are any additional questions, but the contract has been amended. And with that additional work, it has not been um, more than what the agency um, deems as needing to have any more money put into their contract. Any other questions? Mr. May, if I, if I could. You're on mute. Yes, please go ahead. All right. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for going back and just doing due diligence on that. Um, you know, we hear from different people things that are going on. So we wanted to make sure that the situation was manageable for the Humane Society. Um, and I, I love everyone's faces when chicken comes up. <laughs> Everyone always has a little bit of a smirk. I have four chickens in my backyard. They will not be. Uh, running away, but I'm pretty excited to have. How many of those are roosters? Um, they, none of them are. Oh, no roosters. Okay. No roosters, because that would be against the ordinance, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll share a picture sometime. Uh, does Alderman Dowd have a question? Yes, uh, you're referring to chickens, but it does not apply to roosters. Um. We have a noise ordinance against roosters, uh, and if and we have found places for roosters to go. Uh, we had issues when they were brought to the Humane Society uh, on Ferry Road. The neighbors complained. It is, and if they're there for a couple of weeks, uh, it's an issue. So I would hope that any roosters that are impounded will go to the places that we found out of town that will take them. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Alderwoman Clee. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else can, can answer um, what uh, Alderman Dowd had said. Um, the issue with roosters, as I understand it, um, is that, yes, if an individual is going, they can't bring it to the Humane Society. However, if our animal control officer does, in fact, pick one up, and I think that's what those six are that have been since January 1st, 2019, they came from through the animal control officer. When they come through the animal control officer, they have no choice but to bring them uh, to the Humane Society. The Humane Society can't just bring them to the places that we put up there. They have to have some type of blood work. And that's what we had mentioned at the last meeting. That blood work results can take up to a week. Um, in the last case, I believe that there is um, someone who was kind enough to take the rooster. Um, and I have a feeling it was the one that was running around Ward 3. Um, 
but took that rooster to that um, to their either their home or of some sort. Um, I don't know whether it was pending that or they were going to be keeping it or, or what the situation was, but they did try to get it out of there. Uh, we can't expect people to step up like that. That was what my concern was that I brought up at the last um, meeting was that if our animal control officer does bring them there, there is a week where they have to sit there pending the blood work. I had asked who pays for that test. I had asked um, that kind of question. It doesn't look like it's costing anything. So I'm really happy to hear that. But your concern about the rooster possibly remaining in there for a week still exists. And technically speaking, our ordinance says no roosters, including them. So we're kind of in a catch-22. They can't keep it, but they can't get rid of it. Um, we have built this into the system. And that's what the question that I was trying to bring up at the last um, uh, at the last meeting of my concern with the chickens, or I should say the roosters. Um, the chickens don't seem to be an issue. It's just these these roosters. And the one I believe that was running around War Three was because the um, individual um, just let it go. And from what I could tell from the animal control officer, he picked it up because someone called that there was a rooster in the street. So. All right, now I did. Um... This, just to be clear, this is to take, take it off the table by roll call. Yeah, okay, I didn't think we'd made the motion. So we probably got into the merits of the yeah. discussion too early, but in any event. So right now, uh, Alderwoman Harriet Gathright's motion is to take the matter from the table. Could you please call the roll? Alderman Clay. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Kirk says yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Mayor Donches. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. I motion to accept placed on file and authorize the contract renewal with the Humane Society of Greater Nashua for FY 2021 in the amount of $99,081 funding through Department 109 Civic and Community Services Fund. General by roll call. Any discussion beyond what we've already had? Nope. All right. Could you please call the roll? Alderman Clee. Uh, yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Burke says yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. And Mayor Donches. Yes. The motion passes. Uh, well, now we have next is new business. We have resolutions. We have none. New business ordinances. We have none. Record of expenditures. Is there a motion or, excuse me, uh, Alderman Harriet Gathright? I motion that the Finance Committee has complied with the city charter and ordinance pertaining to the record of expenditures for the period from June 26, 2020 to July 9, 2020 by roll call. Uh, you've heard, you, is there, are there any questions or comments on the motion? I don't see anyone. Could you please call the roll? Alderman Clee? Yes. Alderman Lou? Yes. Burke says yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Laws? Yes. And Mayor? Yes. Motion passes. General discussion, are there any items that uh, people would like to discuss? I don't see anyone. Public comment, is there any member of the public who is part of this meeting who would like to make public comment? We'll go on to remarks by Alderman. Any remarks by Alderman? Mayor. Alderman Laws. Uh, I just wanted to welcome Ms. Parkinson, the team. Yes, why doesn't, why don't we take this opportunity, which I probably should have done before, to ask Ms. Parkinson to introduce herself and to tell us a little bit about herself and you know, how was it that she, come, she came to work for the city of Nashville? Hi, everybody. Um, very nice. 
to meet you all. And um, I'm very excited to be working for the city of Nashua. Um, I have a little bit of a varied background in purchasing, but I've had um, 30 years, I hate to say that, of purchasing experience. Um, the most recent of which was for Margarita's, um, the restaurant group, who overnight with COVID-19 closed the doors. They're starting to reopen, but things look a little different there. And that was really kind of what um, precipitated my move in into looking for other employment, <laughs> I think is the good way to put it. Um, and ironically, the city of Nashua job popped up within a week or two of, of um, the, the posting. I saw within a week or two of me being unemployed and here I am a little bit later. <laughs> um, the bulk of my career I actually spent in long-term care um, doing purchasing for senior care, two different senior care companies. I did 16 years with them. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly well versed with um, regulations in that world and how government impacts um, corporate business anyway. And um, I, I live in Exeter currently, um, but, but do have plans on relocating to the Nashua area. I think that's, that's uh, important, <laughs> important to know. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Alderwoman Kelly. Um, yeah, I was going to say welcome as well. I look forward to working with you, uh, Ms. Parkinson. And then I uh, didn't put up my hand quick enough, but I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Director Marchant for moving for the, um, the master plan for the city. And I look forward to seeing that conversation in our city. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. I think I already said welcome to Ms. Parkinson, but I'll say it again. But I also want to say um, thank you, Kim, for um, the detailed breakdown of um, what you provided for us tonight. Um, it was very helpful for me. And um, Mayor, I also want to say thank you as well for responding to uh, Alderman Law's question and being really um, precise about what's really been going on. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? Any? Um... Any other remarks by Alderman? If not, Alderman Clay. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion for adjournment at 8.22. Could the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clee? Yes. Alderman Woman Lou? Yes. Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Laws? Yes. And Mayor? Yes, and the meeting of the Finance Committee is adjourned at 823. Thank you all for attending. See you next, see you in two weeks. Good night. Good night. Good night.